What's up guys, it's Matt with Galaxy Games 843 and we're back with part 2 of the vending video where we're having problems with our Royal 650 machine. So as you remember in our last video, we left this machine not working correctly and I hated to do it, but I had to get back to work. I couldn't be late back to work. I had to be on time. So here we are, we're back to rectify the problem and make sure everything is working properly. You can see I'm already checking my watch just to make sure I'm running on time because I'm back on my lunch break again the very next day and we got to make it right within a certain amount of time so I can be back to work on time as well. So first thing we're going to do is put it into the menu mode and I'm going to go to the price and change the price from $2 back down to $1 because we're going to be running some, some tests here and we're going to use dollars to run those tests and ultimately we want the price to be back to $1 per can because we're going to have everything fixed. So that's what we're going to do. So we got the price set. I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to hold that price down, that, that save button down for two seconds. Back to the main menu. And here we go. Next thing we're going to do is go to the, the sales depth. So that's where we said right now, see it's set all for one. We need to change that to all for two. So there we go. So I changed that to two. So now anytime we vend, it should not give us two cans of soda. It should only give us one. So now we're going to do our first test. We're going to make sure that that works. So first thing we're going to do is put a dollar in. Maybe. <laughs> Here we go. All right, dollars in. So we're going to vend a soda, and we should get only one soda instead of two this time. So let's check it here. All right, success. We've only got one soda, no coin returns. So that's a good sign. Right now, we've fixed our uh, number of cans vended problem we were having. We got our price at the correct price. So now all we need to do is program which button goes to which column. And we're gonna do that with the space to sales option. Now I know it's gonna be a little confusing here for a minute because I'm gonna run some tests because remember in the last video I said the columns are labeled with those yellow stickers, but they're not the right numbers. So what I need to do is run some tests to ensure that I know which columns are which numbers. So to do that, I'm gonna go into the test menu and I'm going to run some motor tests because that's going to tell us which column is which and it's going to vend the different sodas by the column numbers. So I'm going to make a very crude cheat sheet here and I'm going to list out columns 1 through 12 and I'm going to make a space to write exactly which soda falls when I test each one. And then I'm even going to put a little grid pattern and I'll, I'll, I'll display the grid here uh, when, we're, when we get done testing just so everyone can skip this part. Um, I'm actually going to, you know, do a couple and then we'll speed it up just to kind of show you how it works. So what I'm doing is I'm going into test and I'm and see it says column one. So I push vend for column one and there it goes. So that one right there, the front right is column one. So I'm going to write column, I'm going to write Coca-Cola because that's what I have in column one in my column list. And then I'm going to move on to column or my, my next one. So I'm going to hit advance to the next one. It says column two. I'm going to hit yes. It should vend yes. So it vended Mountain Dew. So the second one to the left of column one is column two. I'm just going to double check that one more time. There we go. All right, column two is the Mountain Dew. So we know that one is far right. Column two is right next to it. And those are both in the front. All right, so let's go ahead and update that little spreadsheet I got going on here. So in two is Mountain Dew. You know what, let's, let's draw a little grid, just so a little nice little visual aid factor for us, so that way there's no confusion, especially when we need to come back to, and reference this in the future. Um, like I said, I'll put this grid, this little grid up after I complete testing, so everyone can see exactly how it goes. So you can skip this step with your Royal Machine. All right, let's move on to column three. So if things go well, we should get a Pepsi here. All right, there we go, we got the Pepsi, so we know that Columns one is far right, column two is to the left, column three is to the left of that. And we can assume that four and five and six follow up the row. We're gonna do more tests though. So just so it's not monotonous and you don't have to watch every little test because I'm, I'm gonna give you the answer at the end of this little, little practice. Let's go ahead and speed up the tests just for this little briefing here and then we'll, we'll finish it up. So enjoy this test for just a moment here.
All right, so here we go. So I'm back in the regular speed, and I'm just, I'm to the point where I'm, I'm done testing. I know what the rest of the columns are, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up my form. And here's the grid. Here's what the columns look like in the Royal 650-10 machine. So as you can see, it goes column one in the, in the front right, over to column six, and the back starts column seven all the way through 12. So you can skip the testing. There is your answer. So now what we need to do is program which button goes to which column. And this is a little confusing. It. So I still struggled with this for a moment. So SL stands for selection. And selection one is the upper right button. It's the one we've been using to go up. So the very first one for the Coca-Cola, that is selection one. And we go selection two to the left of that, and selection three, and so on and so forth. So what I need to do is program selection one to access columns one and column seven. So right now it's saying selection one is accessing columns one and two, and that's not right. So I'm trying to figure out how to properly change this. So now I'm on, I'm on selection one, and I'm in the menus for selecting which columns. And right now it's telling me one and two. So column one is flashing, so we want, that, that means it's selected. So I didn't realize that for the time being. So column one is flashing, so that's one of the ones that's selected. And right now I just deselected column one, which I shouldn't have done. I just reselected column seven, so that's right. Now I unselected it again. So right now it's showing it's back to one and two because I didn't save anything. Or I didn't do it right. So I'm, you know, I'm starting to get my frustration level starting to build. I'm like, how do I do this again? So right now column one is flashing. So that's good. So I move it up to column. I gotta go to column seven, make sure seven is flashing and two is not flashing. I'm not doing this right. So learn from my mistakes here, everyone. This is not the way you wanna do it. All right, column seven. Now seven's flashing, so that means seven is selected. So right now I've got columns one, two, and seven all selected for the selection one button. My column one is selected. One, two, and seven still. I need to remove two, but I still can't figure out what I'm doing yet. I'm still learning, guys. Even though I've done this before. All right, column one selected. Flashing. Now I just unselected it. So now only two and seven are selected. You see how this works? When you're going through these, whatever number is flashing when you're in the actual selection screen. There we go. See how two is flashing? And I just unselected it, so it's no longer flashing. Column one isn't flashing. Now it is. So now when I back out, it should say one and seven, one and seven, one and seven. So that is correct. Now selection one is correct. So I'm going to move on to selection two. So selection two is the Mountain Dew in this side. So I need to set columns two and eight for Mountain Dew because that's how I have it set up in the actual machine. So columns two and columns eight are the ones I want to select for the Mountain Dew. And I know it's a lot of funky button pressing going on right now and it's a little bit difficult to see on the screen. So hopefully you've got a nice clear high definition uh, picture so you can see what's going on. So um, there we go. Are we getting that selected in there? I think we are. All right, we're moving on. Column three to selection three. All right, selection four. So all we're doing is we're programming each button to one column, except for the first two buttons we programmed to two columns. And that's why it's a 10 selection machine, but it's got 12 columns, because two of the two of the buttons, well, I mean, you can really, you can customize it and program it any way you want, but I have it set so that two selections have two columns and all the rest have one. So that's how this works. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing some programming here. And all, like I said, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm maneuvering through the menu to each selection. And when I get to the selection, I'm going into that selection and then setting the columns manually for that selection. Right, so it looks like I'm on selection five, is that it? Now I, can, now I gotta reference my notes here. This is why I wrote all this down, so I could reference everything and, and go back and check my work and 
figure out exactly what I need to do because I could not leave this location without having this working correctly. And again, I'm on a time frame, I'm on my lunch break. So I needed to make sure I got it done right. So now I'm going and making sure I'm looking for the flashing column. So there we go, that one was flashing. So we unselected it and we're gonna to move to the correct column and select it by making it flash. All right, so this is a good time to say, guys, if you have questions about programming your Royal machine, put it down in the comments and either myself or one of our other viewers should be able to help you answer those questions. Now, I know this is a little confusing and this is a lot of stuff um, because what you got to do for this, I'm go I've gone into the space to sales menu and I'm manually programming each button to go to specific columns. That's how it's working. So you can, you can use one of the pre pre settings or you can just do it manually like I am. And I, I like, I like doing it manually because then you can have everything exactly done the way you want it to be done, but it can be a little confusing. So right now we're on selection nine, now selection 10. So selection 10 is programmed to column 12. So that was correct. So now we've got everything programmed properly. We think anyway, so we're going to start doing our tests. So you're going to see some of the crazy things that happen during our testing here. So we got our first dollar in press Coke. We should get one Coke out. Still waiting. Still waiting for that motor to turn. I'm like, what's going on here? There we go. Finally, the Coke came out. All right. Now, next dollar in, let's do selection two. Should get a Mountain Dew. There we go. That's programmed properly. We got our Mountain Dew. Next dollar in, let's try selection three. So we should get a Pepsi. But we got a Coke. Now I know that's weird. Um, so we're gonna try one more test and this is gonna happen a few times with this machine. I'm doing a quick check. I'm like, that's not right. Let's check selection three compared to column three. And that's what it should be. So I'm gonna go back to my space to sales. Here we go. There we go. Go into space and sales. I'm going to there selection one, two, three. Selection three is column three. Look at that. So I'm like, why is that? Why is that not working? Why did it give me a Coke? And I can't explain it, but for whatever reason, after I program this machine, and yours might not do this, but mine does, some of the some of the settings, some of the columns when you program them, the very first time you test vend it, it gives you something out of column one, and I don't know why that is. But you'll notice I did, I'm not making any changes here. I'm just double checking all my work, confirming that selection three is pointing to column three, which is the Pepsi button and the Pepsi column. So we're gonna close it up because it doesn't make any sense. And we're gonna do another test. And this time, let's see what happens. Press the Pepsi button. And it vented a Pepsi the correct way. So I can't explain it. But for whatever reason, it didn't work right the first time, but every other time after that it did. So, Sprite, is it going to give us a Coke again? Yes, it does. Look at that. Just like the last one. It gave us a Coke. So, let's let's just do this. Let's do go ahead and do a test again. And make sure it gives us Sprite on the second test. There we go. All right. So, that's correct. I don't know why it bends in column one on the first test. But it did. All right, so root beer. Let's make sure we get root beer here. And there's a Coke on the first try. Let's do another test and see if we get root beer on the second try. root beer on the second try just what we wanted to see so let's do a few more tests so next thing we're going to move down to the dr pepper so let's go ahead and press that one and if i recall there, there we go dr pepper worked on the first try if i recall correctly some of the settings i didn't have to change so it was already mapped out properly let's try diet pepsi that works good 
Moving on, next let's try the Orange Fanta. Orange Fanta works. Next let's try, oh, I gotta get my dollar supply back out, my testing supplies back out of the dollar bill acceptor. Next we're gonna try that lemonade, make sure the lemonade's working properly and then we'll follow it up with brisk iced tea. Here we go, let's try the lemonade. Lemonade pressed. And it gave us an orange Fanta. All right. Let's try it one more time just to make sure it's not having that same thing like the Coke was. Press the lemonade again and what's happening? Another orange Fanta. All right, so that means we got something wrong in our programming. So time to pause our test. Let's go back into the menu system. So that should be selection nine. And if I recall correctly, that should be pointing to column five. So let's see. So let's go to our space to sales. Let's go down to selection nine. And see, nine is pointing to column 11 right now. That's not right. So that's what we got to change. That's why we're getting the orange when we're pushing the lemonade button. All right, so let's go into that. Let's move to column five and select it. So it's flashing and let's move to column 11 and unselect it. There we go. So we'll save that. Go back to the main screen. Let's do another test. So this time when we select lemonade, we should get lemonade and not orange Fanta. Let's see what happens. So there's our first one, it's a Coke. Let's do one more test and we should get lemonade properly this time. So guys, comment down below if you know why, whatever reason when I'm on my first test I get a Coke. It never happens again after that. It's only that first test. So is that something that's royal specific? I don't know. Definitely kind of strange. All right, we're doing a test for the brisk iced tea now. There we go. Everything's working good there. So we've successfully vended every soda that we wanted to in the proper way. We're not getting the wrong soda for different buttons. So we're going to pull the rest of the money out of there that we've just been using to test. And then we'll go ahead and filter the rest of those uh, sodas we've got in the crate back in. And we should be good to go, guys. We, we should be good to go. We should, we should have everything working properly. We should, we're only getting one can per vend. That's right. We got the price set at one dollar so that's also right and we've now got the proper buttons vending from the proper columns so our crisis should be averted at this point right i'm feeling pretty good about it so um it was a stressful day because uh you know after I, I had to leave the previous day because my lunch break was ending i it, it, it ruined my whole night it bothered me because things weren't right i hate leaving things not right so again, I hope uh, I hope I didn't upset a lot of people by leaving the machine undone or not right. And you know, I, it's just what I had to do. So that's why I explained to them and I set proper expectations that I'd be back ASAP to make it right. So we came back the next day on my next lunch break and got it all fixed up. So I was very happy with that. So now we're just gonna go ahead and stuff the rest of these sodas back in here so we can move on because I've spent enough time in this location for this week, right? Oh, yeah. I saw him here, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to pay him his commission. So I, we, you know, we collected from the previous day. So while I was uh, doing my research, too, I also put together his commission envelope. So I wanted to get that to him as well. So we paid him his commission. Now we're going to go ahead and stock the rest of everything up. There we go, getting a random can here, random can there from all my testing, and probably a few more Coca-Cola cans. Pepsi, Coke, you know. All right, so while I'm finishing putting the rest of the cans in, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope if you have any royal machines and struggle with setting them up properly, this video was very beneficial for you. I know it's gonna be very beneficial for me whenever I have to go back and reference how to program 
because this is not something I do every day. I don't program Royal vending machines every day. So with that said, thanks so much, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning up my work area. And, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, while I'm here, I'm just going to pop open this soda machine. I'm going to go ahead and pull probably some of that root beer out of there. And at the same time, I'm also going to put that manual and all my notes in the bottom of that machine. So that way, if I'm ever back here at this location and I'm having issues, it'll be easily accessible for me to access it and get everything taken care of. So guys, again, comment down below if you have more questions about Royal, Royal Vending Machines and how, how they're programmed. Like I said, either myself or one of the other viewers should hopefully be able to help answer those questions. I know there's been a lot of uh, other uh, vendors that have worked with the Royal Machines. Um, I'm not quite sure if they're really doing vending stuff anymore. Um, Jamie Farnsworth, for example, um, he ran a lot of Royal Machines. He had some great locations and I haven't seen any content from him lately, so hopefully he's doing okay. So Jamie, if you're watching, you know, big shout out to you. Thanks for all the inspiration you gave to a lot of us. Hope things are going well for you, sir. All right, so we got one of the root beers in there. Let's go ahead and get one more in there and then we'll go ahead and close everything up. So guys, now's a good time to remind you, make sure you subscribe to the channel. The channel is growing and we've got more videos coming your way. We're gonna start a new arcade series pretty soon where we take um, a broken down, really kind of uh, forgotten about arcade cabinet and make it into something cool. Um, still kicking around which title we're gonna work on or how we're gonna do it. You know, a lot, a lot of people like original games. This one might not be original, we'll see how it goes. But there's another auction coming up. We get another on the road coming up. Lots of cool stuff. So make sure you're a subscriber, guys. All right. So thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Again, I know it was a long video and I know it was tough to follow and there was a lot of information here. So I appreciate everyone's support. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and like our videos, share our videos. Somebody else might benefit from seeing this kind of stuff as well. So once one more time, guys, please subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification so you're notified when our new videos go live. We've got all kinds of great stuff coming your way for the arcade and vending communities. Again, guys, this is Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We'll see you next time.